Since the beginning of us, we were recording things about ourselves that we wanted to last. Cave paintings turned to alphabets, alphabets to sentences, and soon sentences became memoirs. We started journaling things about ourselves, personal history books written for no one that accidentally reveal something about everyone. I remember the first time I opened up Dan Eldon's journals. They were funny and clever and fun. They were profound, political, thought-provoking, inspiring, sexy, sometimes dark and somber, but always adventurous. And after looking through the pages, I remember the feeling that somehow I would never be the same. And I wasn't. Get it, get it. A new sheriff in town. This is Dan Eldon, artist, adventurer, <laughs> cowboy. We're going to be flying in the air below 4,000 feet to avoid radar detection. Dan has always seen things others could not see. He was just born with a vision. Well, that was another harrowing black ops mission successfully completed. This is Dan Eldon, Kit and Gala. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in court. All right. See you. Dan grew up in Nairobi, Kenya, and from a very young age, his mother, Kathy, encouraged him to keep journals and take photographs. As a teenager, he spent his days exploring the world around him in his beat-up Land Rover, which he named Desiree. He learned on the road rather than by the book. He journaled that with Des, the destination didn't matter. The pleasure was simply in going. Dan, his sister Amy, and dozens of their friends went on safaris, visiting nearly 50 countries from all across the world, learning, photographing, and raising money for those in need. They called themselves the STA, or Student Transport Aid. All right, the story of Student Transport Aid and the Frontline Safari Company. The situation in Mozambique really moved us because it's a country completely thrashed by war. So we formulated a plan. We wanted to bring them something like a water pump or blankets. Just, we'd never seen anything like this before. With his camera, he began traveling to war zones to document and bring life to unfamiliar conflicts. He took pictures to make people feel something, but more to make people do something. He journaled about how people said he was too young to make a difference, to really help anyone. But he refused to give up, and so he kept getting closer and closer to the action. After hearing about the growing famine and violence in Somalia in 1992, he packed up his camera and immediately booked his plane ticket. We're now on the outskirts of southern Mogadishu. Soon his photos of the war spread all over the world, making a double-page spread in Newsweek magazine. And at 22 years old, he became the youngest photojournalist hired by Reuters. He witnessed horrible things, but always found ways to help. Nothing could stop him. It was what he was made to do. Tragedy struck today in Somalia after a military operation was launched on what was believed to be a safe house where Somali warlord Mohamed Adid was hiding in Mogadishu. The operation went horribly wrong. One day you'll wake up, not realizing it is your last. July 12th, 1993 was that day for Dan. Survivors from the operation gathered journalists from a nearby hotel to take pictures of the destruction. A mob, angry at what had happened, attacked the journalists. Among them was 22-year-old Dan Eldon. He and three others were stoned and beaten to death. 
None of us knows what our last day will be. And though he only lived 22 short years, he lived all of them full. Dan Eldon believed that the journey is the destination. And though he is physically gone, that journey continues. Since the beginning of us, we were recording things about ourselves that we wanted to last. And after two decades, Dan Eldon's journals, published by his mother and his sister, continue to challenge and change minds. He has and continues to inspire hundreds of thousands of people around the world. 